Hello there, welcome back to my channel, Crafty Concepts with Erin. I am creating another layout. This is a double page layout and I am using the storybook collection. I have the catalog on my desk here to show you. This is the uh, whole collection at a glance with all of the different um, components, but there is a digital art collection. Would you see that right here? They have a double page layout and I'm going to use this, but I'm going to change it up. I'm going to bring, that's all cardstock there. I'm I'm going to bring in this pattern paper here and switch up the format of the layout to work for my photos. So stay tuned to see the changes I made and how that's going to turn out. This is a very whimsical and fun paper pack and so many people thought it would be great and I agree for Disneyland. So I went through my Disneyland photos and actually found some I hadn't scrapbooked and it was meant to be because look at the colors in this photo. We have pinks and kind of like the mulberry color and a little bit of orange and yellow, all of the colors in this paper pack. And that's why I wanna add some of this pattern paper because this pattern is really fun and the little star burst and everything bring in all of the colors so that's going to allow me to bring those into the layout we this these are uh, this is myself and my two boys when they were really little we had all gone to Disneyland there's my husband and we're riding the teacups so you can see this is not a good photo it's totally blurry but it captures the story of the teacups, right? We're going round and round and the kids want to go as fast as they can go. And as you get older, you want to go slower and slower. It's just this weird phenomenon that happens on this ride. I'm sure you guys can relate. This is my son, Clayton, looking so cute sitting in the teacup. You guys, I just love his little smile there. It's adorable. And then that's Hayden, which again is very blurry. But I have three photos and you'll notice, let me grab the layout real quick. This here has four photos. There's three square photos over here and one portrait style photo here. I am going to use this photo, which is landscape for my left hand side. And then these two photos for my right hand side side. So I'm already changing it up there and I'm going to change the colors as well. So let me clear this up and bring in my verse mats and we will get started. Oh, I should point out I've already matted these. I print them with a white border and then slightly inked them up with black ink and then matted them on um, mink, not mink, this is oh it's a new color what is it let me look mist I had to go look at my paper stack it's kind of like this bluish gray color and I also inked that with black ink just to help those stand out a little bit more you guys know how much I appreciate having my Versa mats here and whenever I I have two of them so if it's a double page I can work on both at the same time for my left hand side, I'm going to use this to create a frame style layout. I already adhered a couple removable glue dots to my mat, so that's going to hold that in place. And you can see I gutted this out of the center so I can use that for another project. To finish this side off, I have White Daisy on Mist. And then this, the White Daisy is 11 inches squared and the Mist is a quarter of an inch bigger. So that's going to give us a nice border all the way around and using the uh, measurements on all four sides of my verse mat, I can line that up. For this side, I'm just using a piece of white daisy, but I wanna continue this pattern over to this side. So I have a strip here, this is 12 inches by three and a half, and that is going to kind of tie those two pages together. So it'll look like one continuous piece coming over from this side. Now I have several layers of clouds. Now these are supposed to be 12 inches, but I kind of altered the layout for this side so that they will fit within this inner frame portion. So this one is mulberry and then this one is melon. And then we have white daisy on the bottom here and those will stack just like that allowing that mist border to show on the bottom. I'm gonna do some ink blending on these as well. For this side, I left them the full 12 inches, but I'm thinking I might tuck these under here. I'm not sure yet, so I won't um, adhere that down. We'll put them at the same level as the other side and then just kind of leave them loose because again, I might pull these on top of this piece. I'm not 100% sure at this point. So basically this photo is going to sit here. That's a four by six, another four by six here. 
And then this one is not quite, there was some kind of distracting stuff. So I cropped the photo to it's um, five and a quarter by four. So it's a little bit odd, but again, I wanted to preserve this portion and get rid of the distracting elements. So that one's going to sit right over here. Before I get too carried away with putting everything into place, I want to ink up those Cricut cuts just to give them a little bit of dimension and shadowing, especially the white, because whenever you have white, to make it look dimensional, you almost want to use like a gray, a very soft gray color. I'm going to use linen and I have a blending brush. Close to my heart has their own blending brushes. And then I just take my label maker and put the color on the back. So we'll do this color on the white pieces. I also have a few more, let me grab them. On this layout, they have a cute little rainbow with some fluffy clouds. So I'm going to ink up the edges of those as well. So let me just kind of make sure I've got the right sides up here. I'm going to speed this portion of the video up. It does take a little bit of time to get all of the edges inked up. And I will say it's deceiving because it doesn't look like any color is going down, but I do recommend you periodically check it against a white background because you may get more color than you are wanting. So I'm going around the edge, just the upper edge mainly. And the blending brushes are nice because they go on really softly. So if you hold it there, you can definitely see that color. We'll just do a little bit more. And I do like the blending brushes for this application more so than like the round sponge tools because those you can kind of get some marks or some heavier areas and you do have to be a little bit more careful. But working on my all-purpose mat, I like to start off the edge and then work onto the cardstock. I'm switching up my ink colors, so I wanna make sure my surface is clean. We'll use melon for the melon card stock and mulberry for the mulberry. I'll go ahead and get this one done on camera and then do the rest off camera so you don't have to watch the entire process of ink blending. And you could definitely skip this step, but I do think that it's worth the time and adds a lot to otherwise just kind of flat card stock. Once we have all the pieces done, we can go ahead and adhere them to our base. So these are going to just layer right one behind the other. So what I'm going to do is just use my tape runner and apply tape on the bottom layer of the cloud and tack that down. And then it will be very easy to slide the other ones behind rather than working from the top down. This way you can really get each layer where you want it if I can get it behind the cardstock. <laughs> there we go, I kept catching on the little cloud layers there. So I'm just repeating the process. You can always go back in and sneak more adhesive underneath if you want to, but I don't think it's necessary because they'll be in a page protector. So let me get all my cloud layers adhered and my photos back in place. And then we can jump to the fun embellishing process and you can see the different design concepts and help me decide which one is best. And I have decided to go with the clouds behind the pattern paper so I can go ahead and commit to that and get that adhered down. To finish off the transition between the pattern paper and the cardstock, I thought I'd go with that melon zip strip or the branding strip, if you will, and then bring the photos back in. Now we can bring in all of our fun embellishments. So I have some from the actual digital SVGs. This is a rainbow and I love this because you can cut this rainbow out in any size and any color you know palette that you want to create to coordinate with your layout and then this is where these cute little fluffy clouds are going to come into play so i might tweak those a little bit actually i like this going this way and maybe that one there we'll figure that out in a little bit and then they have a dragon in the digital collection but i'm going to use the one from the coordinating sticker sheet because i like to use up my consumables first and normally i would like him looking into the layout and he's kind of looking out which you know if you use the svg you can flip that image but i'm okay with it it's in the center of the layout so it's going to be looking into our embellishment cluster here and there's also a castle. So this is the castle from the layout. There is a second castle you can print out from the SVGs that has more pieces. So you could do more layering. I cut this out in the mist. This is the darker side for the background and the lighter side 
for the foreground. So I'll, I did add a little bit of pewter inking to that and that's going to sit right here. So these are pretty much going to stay the same. Now this is where I kind of had a couple different options and I wasn't 100% sure. So you guys can vote and tell me which you like better. So the title is made up of two parts. There's a banner that says magic and then the word that says memories. Now on the original layout, there was a portrait style photo. So that took up a lot more room in this direction and the banner hung from underneath. Since I have my photo oriented in uh, landscape, it left a bunch of open white space, which is okay. Sometimes white space is nice, but what I was thinking is I could use this space up here to uh, you know, place the title. So I'm gonna set this option up and then we'll look at the other option and you guys can tell me which one you like better. So I will worry about adhering these down evenly when I actually go to glue them down. But for now, we're just getting a visual. So those will be spaced out and they'll be in contact with that banner there. So then we have the word magic. And if you don't have a Cricut or a silhouette and you don't have the capability to cut these out. Maybe you have a die that makes little uh, different banner shapes and then you can stamp your letters right on the banners and that would be really cute as well. So magic and then we have memories. I know that I want the word magic on the banners so I'm actually going to take a second to adhere those down and that way it's a little bit easier when I move them to the other locations to uh, see which one looks the best. So I just recommend using your reverse tweezers to hang on to that and then a little liquid glue. So I'll go ahead and do this one and then get the rest done off camera. So we're just going to center these right in the middle here of our cute little banners. I love banners. I think they're just so uh, playful and fun. And then the liquid glue, you can move it around just a little bit if you need to slide that to uh, straighten the position. The original word is pretty large. It is over six inches long. It's about six and a half inches. So when I switched the title idea to up in this area here, I shrunk it down and I thought it would look good sitting right there. I'll put the rest of the pieces into place so you can really see the design. I did get the workshop option. There were a bunch of stars that came with it and diamonds. So that's where this is from. I did ink up the edges in black and we've got the uh, honey butter color in the rainbow and then up here. So I wanted to bring it down to this area here to create that visual triangle. And I also, I mean, we have the melon and orangey color in the clouds but there is this cute little sticker that says love you forever from this collection and I thought that that would look nice layered right over the star just to add a little bit more to that area and bring in that color once again. I printed out my journaling and cut it into strips. I love doing this and I've been using my uh, Avery Clear labeling tape for quite a while. So I thought, you know what, I'm going to switch it up and go back to this. And we have open white space down here. So I thought that that would be a great place for my journaling. And I do like to cut them into strips because you can really stagger them. And I think it's just a really fun look. So I've got, I'm just making sure I have enough room here. I think it's going to work and one more. So I will kind of move those around just a little bit so they fit better. But I want you guys to see the whole layout before you vote which version is your favorite. If you are wondering where to find your digital collections after you purchase them and how to get them uploaded into Cricut Design Space, I do have a tutorial here on my channel. I will link that right in the description box below. In that video, I am creating stickers with the SVGs for my Happy Planner, but the beginning process is the same of where to find those in your digital library and how to get them onto your computer and upload them into Cricut Design Space. So. Again, I have a Mac. If you have a PC, it might be different, but I would suggest just looking that up here on YouTube and there will be tons of tutorials walking you through the process. There are a few stickers from the coordinating sticker sheet. They say so cute and let's make believe. Those clouds up top are kind of subtle. So I wanna bring a little bit more into that 
area and I like the pop of black. There's also these little starbursts. So I've got a couple of those. I'm gonna scatter over here around the castle. There's two different sizes and then we'll put the other two up here by the rainbow. The black paperboard embellishments that come with this collection are really fun. Tons of usable shapes. There's a little uh, starburst here and then a heart and I'm going to add an arrow over here. I want to add black to each of the three areas. So this is the layout I came up with and it makes a lot of sense to me. It's very balanced. We have a visual triangle here with the yellow. That's a predominant color that draws your eye all the way through. But sometimes we like to move things around, try different options. And I really wasn't sure I liked this one, but I sent a picture of both options to my mom wanting her, let's be honest, I wanted her to agree with my decision and she didn't. <laughs> so everything I've learned from about design has been from my mom. So when she didn't agree, I was like, ah, now I don't know. So I sent it off to a bunch of my crafty friends and it, there, I just, I needed a tiebreaker. So we'll see what you guys think. Everybody had really valid points. One of the things that was pointed out about this option, and you probably wouldn't see it if you didn't know about the other option, but this, there's nothing to really stop your eye down here, right? Because predominantly we have this white piece showing. So it just kind of goes off the edge of the page. And again, I don't think you would notice that unless you had side-by-side -side versions. So I still really like this one, but let me switch it up and show you the other option. I'm going to move the title back underneath the layout where it was originally designed. So I'll bump this up. Now we do have that white space still up top. So I'm going to relocate this embellishment cluster up here. And then we will hang the banner underneath the photo. So it's going to look like it's hanging down from the photo. So we'll just go ahead and add our little letters here across the bottom. And again, I'll worry about getting them straight when I finally commit to the placement. Now I do want to bring uh, black up into that area. So I'll just go ahead and layer this little arrow right over the star there. So this does frame the photo in nicely and keeps your eye from going off the bottom of the page, but it's the second part of the title that kind of throws me. So they're supposed, it's supposed to sit here. So they're kind of together, but to me it gets lost when we have all of these color transitions behind it. Now Janice created one of these and she actually used the offset tool to make a white layer and that might be a good solution. Um, if we put it down here, it just feels too detached from the word magic. And I don't know, I just, it feels a little bit off when it's down here by itself. Just for fun, let's try this option. I cut it out in black to bring in more black accents and I did use the offset tool to give that a shadow. I went ahead and adhered my layers down and I do like the way that looks a lot. So let's see how it looks on the layout. It definitely stands out a lot more than the orange or the paprika. And even if I had put the paprika on an offset tool, I still don't think it would have been 100% right. I think the black is the key. I did like having an element layered over the corner of the castle. So there is this paperboard heart. It's a larger heart from the same collection. And let's see how that looks. Ooh, that looks pretty good. So I do like this. So I'm actually gonna walk away. I'm gonna head out and make dinner, let this sit overnight and come back in the morning with a fresh set of eyes. Sometimes you just need to walk away for a minute and it's so funny because this layout came together actually really quickly and then you get hung up on one little design element. And in the grand scheme of things, it really wouldn't have mattered. I'd have been happy with both options. Even the paprika uh, option that was with the pre-designed layout, I wasn't saying that was wrong or bad. Just for my layout, I thought that the um, black option popped a little bit more and was a better choice. So I pretty much know which direction I'm going with this layout, but I thought it'd be fun to see what everybody votes. Do you like the title banner up top or the banner on the bottom. Be sure to leave it in the comments. I will share my finished layout so you'll know which way I decided to go um, all over on my Instagram account. You can find me on Facebook or Pinterest. You can find those social media links in the description box below. And for those of you that don't have social media, I'll share it in the community tab here on YouTube as well. 
As always, if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and hit that like button. It helps me out a lot here on YouTube. Everything is listed in the description box below. And if you're looking for more inspiration for the storybook collection, then check out this video right here. Thank you so much for watching, and I will catch you next time here on YouTube.